How are we doing there boys and girls? Manthys here and welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about what we might do with those alt armies that people have been slowly but surely building over Shadowlands. And I'm going to start off the video by giving you the exact answer. Not a lot. It's not looking great. Uh, I wanted to showcase some of the things that we've been thinking of, things that we've been trying, uh, and unfortunately there's always a stumbling block in front of every single one of them. Almost as if this is by design. Um, alt armies, who has them, why do we have them? Well, many people throughout Shadowlands had been utilising the mission table. The more level 60 characters you had, the more access to mission tables you had, uh, and mission tables were just a nice, steady, passive amount of gold. An alternative for many people was just to, you know, run and do some very basic callings. You complete a few world quests, you complete a calling, 1500 gold, Really simple stuff. Um, none of this seems to be the case in Dragonflight. There's an awful lot of... Well, not a lot. There's there's not so much to be able to be achieved with these alt armies. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using one alt or ten alts. The, the issue is, is there's not much love for them. Um, and so, quite logically, I decided to say, right, well, what do the professions have to offer then? Surely the professions are going to have something. Something quick, something easy that characters can pick up on, ca uh, or professions that characters can pick up on characters that they don't play all that often. Uh, and maybe just log in and hit a cooldown once a day. You know, be efficient by using your cooldowns on many characters. And even this is proving relatively <laughs> difficult to find any. A few people have reported that there are a few odd ones, but I wanted to showcase here today how uh, on paper they sound like they might be quite good, but in reality you're just going to struggle with them. Let me show you what I mean. Let me um, Tailoring. Tailoring is one that's become quite well known because tailoring has two daily cooldowns. It has two daily cooldowns for two specific materials, which instantly gets your goblin senses going, right? It gets your goblin senses thinking that, oh, well, surely if I log in on my tailor and press a button every day, uh, I win, right? Surely this will always be profitable because it's restricted. You can't mass produce these. Uh, not always. The two we're talking about is the Azaweave Bolt. Uh, as a weave bolt is going to take three pieces of vibrant wielded cloth bolt and two awakened in this scenario awakened frost and awakened order Chrono cloth bolt is very similar, but instead of using the awakened frost it uses awakened air When you dive a little bit deeper into dragonflight and you start to work your way through tailoring You'll notice that these two different types of cloth the chrono cloth and the as weave go in different directions. They're each components that make certain different types of gear and it's not going to be too unusual to see a crafter specializing in chronocloth or a crafter specializing in Azaweave. Now, if you log in and you press your button every day, this is great, but look at the recipe difficulty on these. This is going to lead to a very key problem with how Dragonflight works. If you have a tailor that is just a crafting alt and a character that you don't really do so much with, that you just want to have there so you can log on and press a button once a day, your results are going to be really poor. You're going to log on, you're going to buy your Awakened Air, you're going to buy your Awakened Order, you're probably going to craft together a few vibrant Wilder Cloth bolts, and you're going to hit that button, and you're only going to get a quality one Chrono Cloth bolt out of it. Same with if you're dealing with Azaweave, you're going to hit that button and all you're going to get is a quality one. There'll be other people, there'll be people who play their tailoring far more consistently that will be able to produce quality two. And there'll be some clever souls that will really invest deep into tailoring and will be able to create quality three Azaweave or Chrono Cloth bolts. This is going to price you out of the market very, very quickly. Uh, we already start to suspect that quality 2 is going to be where the majority of the materials live and it will be under sort of spe special circumstances where you'll choose to buy quality 3. You might have to craft many, many things and hope for things like inspiration procs to generate quality 3 materials. Um, this is going to mean that if you're not actively playing a tailor, just logging on and pressing the button's not going to be great. Your crafting cost is going to be the same as somebody else's. Um, they're Awakened Frost, you're Awakened Frost. They're Awakened Order, you're Awakened Order. It's still going to hold the same market value. 
but you're going to log on and press that button and produce something far, far lesser of quality than what somebody that spends a lot of time with tailoring. Now, I very quickly took a little bit of a look through this and thought, well, hang on. Are these not a key component for the bags? I thought maybe there's a get out of jail free card here. If we can use the as a weave or we can use the chronocloth to make something that doesn't have quality once crafted, then you don't strictly need top quality materials. And I thought, hey, surely the bags, right? Take a little look at the bags and things start to look up. Things start to look good. Ha ha, three as a weave bolts, three spool, uh, sorry, five spools of wilder thread. Bags don't have a quality. When you make a bag, a bag is a bag, right? So surely this gives us a really good opportunity for that character that's an alt to just, you know, pick up this recipe. Doesn't matter if you're producing only quality one as a weave at this point, but you can just craft a bag every couple of days. Great. Surely problem solved. No, not quite. Uh, you're not going to have access to this recipe unless you're equally playing on that character, at least somewhat. Uh, the recipe for the bag is locked behind Renown 19. Um, yeah, I would imagine that an alt is unlikely to be getting super high in Renown. That is a significant amount of Renown to be farming uh, or to be acquiring. Uh, it's, that's going to be tough, tough going on a main character for a while, never mind an alt. So that fell flat again. I was like, well, there's another bag, right? Maybe the Chronocloth offers something a little bit better. Chronocloth, surely this time, this won't let us down. Chronocloth makes the reagent bag. Same situation, looks good on paper. And then it gets only steadily worse. We're now on 23 to get the recipe for the Chronocloth bag. This is a real problem. Um, it's a problem for those with alt armies. And this is how I really wanted to start this video by saying, unfortunately, the way that things are looking is that those alt armies aren't really gonna be able to be put to much use, or at least I've not been able to find many good uses for them. Um, there are another couple of scenarios very similar to this that look good on paper, but when you dive a bit deeper, they start to fall apart very quickly. Jewel crafting is one. Where jewel crafting at the moment we do have uh, there is some cooldowns for jewel crafting. I've not leveled this one yet, but you can see them here. There are some uh, cooldowns for jewel crafting where you take some of the basic gems and you it's like a transmute. You turn them into the higher quality gems. This also is going to suffer from the same issue that a getting these recipes in the first place is going to require you to level up a bit, put some spec points in places, which is not strictly the end of the world. But then you're dealing with quality again. There's no point taking materials and deliberately choosing to craft something in superior. Um, the way that the game is going to be set up is that quality 2, quality 3 is going to be what everybody is striving for. And quality 1 is not going to have much life to it. So... I guess at this moment in time, I put the question out to you guys, any of you that have maybe been looking into it, maybe some of you guys that have been playing beta as well, have you found any really good uses for your old armies? Um, I'm personally struggling. Now, I have lots of characters, not as many as some, but I think I'm probably going to end Shadowlands with about 15, maybe close to 20 level 60s. Bit of an altaholic. Um... Without actively playing on those characters, they're going to be sitting there doing not a lot for me in the in the upcoming uh, patches. So yeah, we'll, we'll, time will tell on this one. Let me know what you, your thoughts are on this on the comment section down below, boys and girls. I'll be I'll be happy to hear from you. Intrigued, if nothing else, especially if you found some good use for your alt armies. Um, or come say hi over on the Discord. Come and jump into the Discord. There's lots of discussions going over there at the moment. All things Dragonflight, uh, especially in the avenue of gold making. So, But I'll leave it there for today. If you enjoyed the video, give the video a like. Consider subscribing if you're new around here. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.